Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we're going to be looking at uh, this nice art book that I got uh, during Christmas. This is the Marvel art of the Brothers Hildebrand. Now, honestly, I didn't know a lot about these guys. I had seen some of their stuff. And I'm sure you guys have too. You know, in the industry they tend to talk a lot about like... Alex Ross and Joe Jusco and guys like that but I've never really heard of the Brothers Hildebrand I've seen their art uh, usually finds its way on like Marvel trading cards and some video game boxes and stuff as you'll see but I didn't know these two guys actually so here's them what they look like now and uh, yeah so I'm just gonna turn through this book here as I've said in previous videos, um, it's, this is like the normal film quality. If I zoom it out anymore, it gets slightly fuzzy. And I would rather have you see um, the full, like the crispness of the art. So that's why it's it's on the setting. And it's just as normally when I open up my um, device here and start filming. So which uh, most of it does not cover the full pages, as you'll see when we get into the uh, proper part of the book. But yeah, if you like this book, you can find it on Amazon. It's around 30 to $36. Uh, retails for 60 so it's, a, it's on quite a little deal right now, so you might want to pick it up. So here's the start. Um, this, this right here is actually nine X-Men trading cards linked together. This is probably one you guys have seen quite a bit. This was from the 1994 uh, X-Men Fleer Ultra line. You know, it had like the gloss on the cards and stuff like that. So I'm sure quite a few of you remember that. And so uh, the book shows a bit of like the process. We see like photo reference and things like that. Some of the pencil work. So, yeah, as we continue through here, you, you'll just kind of see things um, that might or might not jog your memory. So, let's get that. These are from the 1994 Marvel Masterpiece set, which those were the painted Marvel cards, as many of you remember. And so, this is now kind of showcasing the art a little more. See, so we got Black Cat over here. And as we continue, you'll see some, like, obscure type characters, too. Get a nice uh, Black Panther here on the end. Black Widow in her classic gray suit with the short red hair. Always like that version of her. Yeah, we got some obscure ones here. This Blackout and Black Wolf. I think these might all be alphabetical, maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at here we pull it down here so you see blade and then blaze hopefully we'll get a new set of blade movies here soon as we've got Morbius coming out you know he's kind of made quite a few appearances with that so uh, he has some more obscure ones here blood wrath and blood hawk Here's two really cool ones here. We've got Cable and then the uh, Captain America image there. I want that card. I'd like that in a really big blown up picture, honestly. You got a Captain Universe kind of up there. and Here's Carnage. Century, never heard of that character. Uh, yeah, he looks like he might be an Eternal or something, possibly. Like the rainbow coming off of him there. Chamber, I remember he was from Gen X, I want to say. Cerebra, not really sure about her. See if I can. There we go. Gently put the hard cover down. Here's some more 
X-Men here. We've got uh, Colossus with a sweet cape on. Channeling Mr. Sinister there a little bit, it looks like. We got Cyclops. And Daredevil and Darkhawk. Here's a really nice Deadpool over here. That's really I like the like the crisp edges on there. Yeah, you'd call these guys like prestige format artists or something to that extent. Because not typically you'd see their stuff uh, sequentially, you know, in a normal comic book. Although later in the book you will see a few pages that are, which uh, did surprise me as well. So here's a lesser known Spider-Man villain here. The Demo Goblin, I suppose. And they had too many different goblins after a while. Just kind of lost track. I think it's interesting whenever they find guys who are really muscular here. This might even be one of them at an early age. So this was their model for Doctor Doom here. Which, look at that. They didn't utilize any of that, that muscle at all. But that's fine. There's Domino. Doom 2099. Got Electra. Exodus over here, you can barely see him. And then Evil Hawk, I'm assuming some sort of protagonist with Dark Hawk, maybe. Or antagonist. And Fang Foom in the corner there. And this is Firestar. And Nick Fury here. He looks almost like uh, Sylvester Stallone a little bit in the face. Wow, look at this Galactus over here. I love the blast coming off there and everything. Really cool. And Gambit. Those 90 kids. Favorite Raging Cage in there. A couple of Ghost Riders here. We've got Ghost Rider uh, as well as Ghost Rider 2099. It's a green goblin here. Look at how big the eyes are. It's, you know, got almost a cartoony. Yet to just sinister looked at. We normally see him with the smaller eyes now. But I mean there's something to be said about this this look too. See Jean Grey. Yeah, so these cards are very much referencing uh the nineties here. Some lesser knowns over here. We got Havoc over here. Hawkeye, the Hulk, he's got like that nice little small cut he, he had in the 90s. Yeah, so I'd say this book really seems like it's a time capsule of the 90s art more than anything else. I remember I had a big old poster by these guys on my back um, bedroom door. Actually, no, it was actually in the front of my bedroom door for a while. It fell down, the tape didn't hold eventually, and it got crinkled up, but I got gifted that for my birthday one year. Hulk 2099 and the Human Torch. Love all the flame work there. And then they've chosen to make a little shape with it leading up to him. Very nice. Speaking of products of the 90s, we have the the sexy invisible woman with the Fantastic Four emblem breast cleavage cutout. It was always kind of weird, you know, 
the Invisible Woman was always marketed more as like a mom, I felt. And so when they went that direction, I was like, that's a bit strange. Granted, I was a kid at the time. I was probably eight or so. See, Iron Man here from the 90s. If you watch the Marvel Action Hour, you're probably familiar with him looking like this. That Jubilee. Jack of Hearts I'm not familiar with, but he looks like one of the Apocalypse guys. Or actually, no, he's probably from Asteroid M, like Magneto's group. Maybe. I could be wrong. Huh. But yeah, there's Jubilee. Got a couple. Oh, well, that's not Juggernaut. The back shape there almost looks like a dome. So yeah, we've got Juggernaut. Always a fun villain there. And then Junk Pile. Not familiar with him at all. Justice. Definitely not familiar with him. Look at this kingpin over here. Baller, look at all these dollar bills. <laughs> what are those, 50s? <laughs> you think he would have bigger bills to indicate oh, what a big shot he is. Not even a hundred in there, huh? No, those are all 50s. <laughs> Making it rain 50s. And it probably has like billions of dollars, so they've got him with 50s. It's still a cool shot, though. Let's just... You know, a small detail, but maybe hundreds were harder to come by in the 90s. These ones are all small here. Claw. Um, crystalline. Chimera. Legacy. Don't know any of these. Well, I know Claw. Lilith and M. Here's a look at this Loki over here. I could never get past Loki's costume in the comics. I know a lot of people have really attached themselves to the Marvel Cinematic Universe Loki, but the comic Loki's costume was always so obnoxious to me. A Magneto over here. Looking like he's about to rip a train in half. Look at that. The Mandarin, never truly realized for the Iron Man films. Mean Streak. Got Medusa over here. <laughs> Mephisto, he's got a little tiny image here. Hopefully he'll be a bigger threat in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but uh, we're going to have to see. Everyone was really hoping for an appearance in the, um, you know, WandaVision and that. He might end up showing up in um, the Multiverse of Madness movie coming out in May. A Mr. Fantastic over here. Mr. Hyde and Mondo. There's our Morpheus card up top here. Very purple that card. Morg. Erwin's favorite. No, I've never heard of Morg. Yeah, who are these guys they find that are so built? Namor. Nebula. I had never heard of Nebula until the Guardians movie. I thought she was just fully something they made for the film. So I was surprised when I went back and I saw... Uh, she was actually someone from the uh, comics. Because the other bits of the team are pretty well mashed around. Nightcrawler, that's a very cool Nightcrawler. I always love how Nightcrawler like mixed the spiritual aspect into the X-Men and stuff. and Even in the cartoon, he ended up getting uh, Logan to pray in a church at one point. I thought that was pretty amazing. Night Watch, you have never heard of. We got Nova over here. I think we'll have some iteration of Nova coming up as being um, important in the films here soon. Odin, this is a cool looking Odin. P 
Penance, who I don't know. Um, Phoenix. Arguably the most powerful mutant in the X-Men. At that point, you know, she's possessed by some sort of other entity, so I don't even know if it counts at that point, but... We got Professor X over here, checking his emails. Uh, early Prowler here in the corner. It always reminded me of Spawn and stuff, but I mean, I guess Prowler was even before uh, the creation of a lot of Todd stuff, but he seems like a very Todd McFarlane-esque design to me. I know he did like that little short story and stuff later on, but he was a character before then, so. Psylocke over here. Yeah, the pages are super shiny too, so that's another thing I'm trying to combat here. But I hope you're enjoying the video regardless. So, And of course, find the book if you can. It's, it's a deal right now. Punisher. Look at him coming through the window. $20.99 one over here. Quasar. Barely see. There you go. Random in the corner. I remember his figure was a peg warmer for a long time. This one, I don't think they put the name on. Uh, yeah, I don't see a name. Oh well. Here's a red skull. Looking very proud of himself. Rhino. Here's a Rogue. Here's their model for Rogue. The Sabretooth one. I love all the greenery they've got. And all these backlit here. That's pretty cool. Sauron, and we've got a Batman villain in there, the Scarecrow. <laughs> I guess Scarecrow is a broad enough thing that Marvel has one too. That Scarlet Witch up here, this is very much a 90s one. She's got the short hair and everything. There's her model there. Shatterstar. I think this is a Liefeld creation, if I remember correctly. Shadow Cat, not too familiar with. Very jacked. She Hulk over here. Pretty muscular. There's their model here. See, she wasn't really quite as ripped. I think that's the same one they actually used for uh, Rogue on the other page. It looks like they used some of the muscular reference here from this guy. Obviously not the same angle, but you can certainly see, you know, the, the tone definition, the lighting. We got Siege and Silver Sable. Very cool Silver Surfer over here. Look at this one. The cosmos and stuff. And yeah, they've got a little path to him too. Skin, I'm pretty sure he was a Gen X uh, character. Skullfire, I'm not really sure of. Solo. Spider-Man over here. 
They're very cool. This is a different one than the one on the cover. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Here, look at that. An explosion there. I wonder if he's running from the green goblin or not. Spider-Man 2099 up here. He's going to be getting more popular as the Spider-Verse 2 has him as a main focus. We have Spider-Woman, which always kind of weirded me out because I think she had this type of design here before. It was co-opted by Venom later on. Could be mistaken, but I think she did. And we see Storm here. So this is just says so Strange, so is that not Doctor Strange there? That's just some other character named Strange? Let me know down below. Not super well versed in all of it. Sink down here. Nice uh, menacing crotch shot here of Thanos. I can imagine, you know, if you're a human who suddenly shows up in his presence. <laughs> That's the view you're going to get real quick. So you're going to curl up into a ball. Terex. Like a kind of a similar thing here going on with Thing. I just love Thing. Here's Thor. A very odd costume choice here. But I'm sure that's how he was looking at the time. We got the rainbow bridge in there. Nice little detail. Thunder Strike. Which I'm not sure if he was still the same Thor. Just very 90s up or not. But I do remember seeing him. Typhoid Mary. She normally look really creepy. I don't know why she's um looking very not creepy in this picture. She's you know, like torn up and sickly looking, but clearly not there. There's her model. Um Tyrant in a really small an Im image there. Is that you look? Looks like a Kirby character. U.S. agent. Yeah, these guys are so ripped. Vengeance down here. Our venom. Very small vision. War machine. Here we got Warlock. Werewolf. And White Queen. Yeah, White Queen's not looking quite like herself either. Her hair is normally blonde from what I've seen, so. Press to see it white like the rest of her here. I said this was cropped when it was printed, so the full shot was never seen. I wonder where it was cropped. Here's that nice Wolverine picture they showed in the intro cutout of him. So yeah, we've got some nice snowy mountains around him here. Looks like he's charging through a Bob Ross painting, honestly. Which is kind of awesome. A Wrecker from the Wrecking Crew. And then 
Exian. Never heard of him. Uh, so these are the hollow foil cards here for the power blast and power blast card that says so here's a Captain America here a nice monument next to him and it always seemed like the scales were really detailed and realized and like paintings and stuff but not so much in the comics had Kevin McGuire do it in that four-part miniseries, and then uh, John Cassidy really brought it back in the early 2000s. And we've got another carnage down here. We got that black suit, Daredevil, Hulk. Oh, well, looks like he's got bombs or grenades all on the side of him. That's the Peter David run of the Hulk for sure. Iron Man. Putting his suit to the test here. Looks like he's out in space. Punisher. The sweet headband. Scarlet Witch again. Their short hair 90s look and this beautiful Spider-Man. I think this is the one that's on the cover. I could be wrong. I don't want to flip the cover open and try to look though. But yeah, that's very cool. Love the realized buildings, buildings in the background here. And of course, lots of motion. The webs Some coming up there. Another Venom. Really has that gums stretch on the side there. And a war machine. See that Apocalypse. Wish this one was blown up. I really love Apocalypse. We oh, got Archangel. Cable. Cyclops and Gambit. Magneto and Rogue. So we have a lot of X-Men here in this part. Sabretooth and Wolverine. Ah, here's some posters here. So this is a Spidey. Captain America. Would definitely hang that if I saw it anywhere. The pose looks similar to the other one we saw a little while ago. Well, oh, this is a cool one here. So this is X Men twenty ninety nine, which we some of it get lost gets lost in that crease there. But yeah, that's a pretty impressive image. Oh, no, this is the book cover. Yeah, my, my mind knows that one. This X-Men fight scene here. That's cool. Captain Universe and the X-Men. So, yeah, that's a poster. It looks like they've got the dates on here, too. I don't, I don't know if I noticed it on the other ones or not. Maybe they didn't need to put dates as they were all just the, the 94... Yeah, no. They did have the card numbers, though, so if you've got those cards, you can go back and compare and contrast. Now, this image I've seen before, this looks like it's definitely much more stylized, you know, the stretching of the faces and stuff. But it is cool. It works for sure. You can see the tension there. And this was a poster? I don't know. I'm reading. It looks like they went to the Kubert Art School, so that's like the comic book art school. Always thought about doing that myself. Now they offer online stuff. They have like a mail-away course, which is 
still good, but it's not as extensive as an actual, you know, being on site. So I don't know if they fully adapted yet to online courses, especially with COVID and everything, like, you know, f a full load like you would have in the building. But that'd be cool if they can ever do that. Gambit over here and Spider Man versus Goblin. This is the Ben Riley Spidey here. Looks like he's coming into your window. X-Men, here's a door poster, different than the one I remember, but I could imagine this is probably like a big old six foot one if they say door poster I think it's probably an actual huge poster some more X-Men over here the Silver Surfer some more cards here Versus cards, it looks like. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you see all these photo references and stuff like that, and there's quite a few artists who are hesitant um, with using reference. But I, by all means, if you have to use reference to get a better image, you should certainly do it. So you like to we often get frustrated as artists whenever we're drawing and then it doesn't look like it does in our head. You know, if we've got a reference, you know, we've got something to look at, so it's more likely to turn out the way we want it to. So yeah, looks like a lot more Fleer versus cards here. All of these here are fighting cards. Fall of the Mutants. This one here. Phalanx Covenant. So it looks like these are X Men events. Yeah. Inferno and Executioner's Song. Fatal Attractions. That's when Wolverine gets his Adamantium pulled out, which is what's going on on that card there kind of see it. I wish it was a bigger image. Extinction Agenda. And we've got another Spider-Man over here. A J. Jonah Jameson. Yelling as only he can. There's Bloody Mary. Raven. I like how they've got the eye magnified through the scope there. That spider or care or la carry on here. And then this is Spider Man's origin. Getting bitten. I saw that they're gonna be um making a book that collects all of Jim Lee's X-Men cards. I wonder if they'll do that for a lot of the other card series or not. Some Maximum Carnage ones. Well, this one is. This is not. This is Cosmic Spider-Man. There. Power and Responsibility. The jury, female symbiote. So yeah, these are just card titles here. I don't think those were story arcs. I know she definitely showed up, but that's you know she had a name and stuff. Another gambit over here with warrant, inspired by the band. No, I don't think so. It looks like they had to redo this card, they said. 
issue with proportions of Warren. I was going for exaggeration of the figure, but I took it too far. He said he would do it differently if he did it now. Some Spidey cards here. They're Green Goblin versus Spider-Man. Lots of web here on this one. They're swinging one. There's another big X-Men spread here. Kingpin and Shocker. Silvermane. So I think these might have all been in a Spider-Man card set, maybe. Spidey versus Venom. Rhino. And here's him with Sandman, it looks like. No, it's just the big guy here, because it's the Enforcers. They were kind of a more obscure... Spider-Man villain team the earlier books Scorpion and JJ and original X-Men another oh, Spidey here swinging It's amazing how many different ways they can convey the same action for him Shock I am not familiar with. This one's kind of dramatic here with the black and white on them. I wonder if that was a certain card series where they were all like that, or just this card in particular, or these two cards, actually. Here's another one. Those are all black and white. The Spider-Man is this Fortunato. Yeah, these are all black and white. Oh. There's a Sh Shang Chi over here, and then we see Crown and then Hammerhead. That's a cool one. We see Spider-Man up against a Sentinel. It has happened a few times. It's always nice to see, you know, heroes fight the other heroes' uh, threats. That's cool. And then there's Spidey versus Morbius right here. Looks like this is the swimsuit special or something. Very much a thing in the 90s here. You got Rogue and Gambit. Uh, Scott and Jean. Another rogue and gambit here. There's some backgrounds here for Asgard, it looks like. Smoke and mirrors. This is a nice image here. <laughs> yeah, I love this, though. McDonald's commissioned them to do this image here. <laughs> it's like X-Men hanging out at a play place. <laughs> it's kind of random. I don't know if they used it for anything, though. Another jumping cap. It's like they, they like to make him spring forward a lot in his images. I think it had to do with the shield, probably, because it was either this or they'd have his shield out, but if the shield is out, you can, don't get to see his form a lot, so... Nice back to basic Fantastic Four here. And then we see some non, well, I guess Red Sonia was Marvel for a while, and now she's not. So Red Sonia Scavenger Hunt, and then a Conan the Savage. Here we go. Now we've got 
Burger King for this one. So this was probably for a toy promotion they did for the X-Men. Um, what was it? X-Men Evolution? The WB cartoon? Let's see if I'm reading it through there. X-Men. Yeah, no, I mean, I know this is from the later cartoon here. I think it's X-Men Evolution, which is a pretty cool show. I remember this one here. Yeah, this is for the Disney Adventures magazine here. There's the finished cover with the text on there. Yeah, and this was from the Spider-Man The Ride at Universal Studios. Which I did go on this. Not a bad ride. And it had like sense stuff. It would like blow some, like steam at you and water and all sorts of random stuff. It's like a sensory thing. And then the Hulk roller coaster as well. And then looks like a Doctor Doom. I don't remember riding a Doctor Doom ride, but looks like there was one for that too. But the Hulk was awesome. The Hulk was actually the first roller coaster we did there. It was like 0 to 60 in 2 seconds or something crazy. So yeah, this is the thing I was talking about here. X-Men 2099 Oasis. Um, looks like they did a story inside of there. So it says graphic novel though. So I wonder if this is just an excerpt from it and there's a full book. So he keeps saying graphic novel, so but I don't think this is the whole. But yeah, you get to see their art sequentially here. Which, you know, that's what I always love to see is whenever like cover artists, more or less, uh, come in here and they're able to do a full book. It's just amazing, you know. But it takes them so much time. That's yeah. Well, that's why you don't see it a lot. And then I don't think the um, the pay scale works either, if I remember. Like a cover is normally paid out much higher than a page rate, so a company will really not try to do interiors with artists like that and then yeah it's just a time suck and all that sort of stuff too so but yeah no it's cool seeing their stuff here with all this I mean this looks like it's extensive though I don't know if it's a a full full thing it looks I don't know why they would just throw the full thing in here and not have you buy the whole book though so that's kind of odd but this really is a um a collection of their stuff here see a lot more of the lighter the jungle stuff and all that and then, of course, as soon as I say that, it switches to this bleak, fiery background. But, yeah, no, this is nice. Uh, it looks like a full story in here, so I'll have to go and read this, actually. like a full thing crazy crazy and then it looks like it wraps here maybe and then it goes this is from the back cover of it and then this is a the concept as well Marvel art so these are looks like I'm trying to read the description Oh no, so it says the unique projects that Greg worked on since his brother passed, so 
Greg's brother is no longer with us. So there's only one Hildebrandt now. So yeah, here's a look at this. This is a nice lighter image here. There's a cat pose we haven't seen yet. It's a nice one. Some symbiote fighting up here. I remember these here, the Marvel Illustrated line. Um, and then this one here, Treasure Island, was illustrated by Mario Gully. And it's quite rare now. It's, it's worth quite a bit. And uh, Mario's getting back on his feet. So it's nice to see him doing more now, too. He is the creator of the character Ant, who Eric Larson recently bought and relaunched. So you'll probably be hearing a lot more about him here soon. Let's see. I know it's switched here. Oh, okay, right here. So no, it just went to Star Wars all of a sudden. I was like, did I miss something between Treasure Island and this? Yeah, it looks like we got some Star Wars here. It says the Marvel year, so this might have been a collection of all uh, the early stuff, and they put it in a prestige book. There's Deadpool versus Thanos. Old Man Logan. Secret Wars. The Guardians of the Galaxy here. Ah, look at this image here. Wow, recreation of the first cap cover. Shame that gutter killed the middle, though. I'd like to see that unobscured. I'll have to look where I can find it. Thor image here. Black Panther. Another cap here with a different shield. Let's see, I'm trying to read the thing. Oh, so this was for prostate cancer awareness, he said. That's with the blue format. The comic was published in 2016. Nice, he said. It's important to make to to me to make a difference if possible. So that's very cool, awesome. So thank you for doing that, Greg. Here's another um, redoing of a classic X Men cover here. This is when like the new team started. You know, the giant size is the official um, culmination of the new characters, but this is the first. Regular ongoing, that's uncanny number 94. We got Deadpool versus Punisher. We got a Daredevil here. Little Kingpin fight. Captain Phasma from the new Star Wars. This Thanos is looking a bit carefree here. Look at this. He's kicking up these skulls here. Looks like he's. Bouncing another one in his hand. That's a really interesting take on kind of the callousness and confidence of Thanos. Death of the Inhumans. It's an event that kind of fell flat, unfortunately. Uh, Conan. There's another Old Man Logan cover here. There's a Spider-Man here. It says Avengers, so maybe this was a cover, a variant cover used for an Avengers book, although clearly not Avengers there. And then we get this very huge blue. 
of doing this cover was interesting for me because the door had been redesigned. So this is really tiny in the corner here. I don't know why. Is this the actual cover though? So that's weird if they used all that blue space. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't say they didn't. <laughs> and then if you meet them, you can get a sketch done in there. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Encourage you to buy this book yourself. It's on Amazon right now for about half the price. If they don't have it there, it is even worth the full cover value of the $60. Um, yeah, and dig through your cards, dig through your books. See if you've got any of their stuff. Let me know down below if you've got some fond memories of them. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.